Do I have any tips for starting the day positively in this coronavirus situation? Like every day, I do and take the cold shower. I take the cold shower, which wakes me up, and then I want to go everywhere because I got so much energy. No, I go into breathing, breathing exercises. And uh, from the breathing exercises, uh, which stills my mind in the deep, I'm suddenly aware and just being there, being here. Amazing feeling. That's the way to start the day. Eventually, a push-up exercise after doing 30 breaths is an amazing jolt of adrenaline uh, rushing through you. Then uh, you are able to start into any other way because you have stilled your mind and you have stilled your body through the cold shower, the breathing exercises, and the push-up exercise. You're really on. From there, we can go anywhere. This is the way I start my day, every day. We know the basics, wash your hands, stay at home, stay away from other people, um, try to you know, maintain a world where people are moving as little as possible, but, but what do you think we're missing that, that, that people might make a mistake and, and, and exacerbate what we're going through now? Well, I, the thing that needs to get fixed in the next few weeks is to prioritize our testing capacity, which is going up, but making sure the right people are being tested. Uh, that will guide us uh, in, in a very deep way. And who are, who are the right people? Uh, if you're symptomatic or somebody you've been in close contact with tested positive, you know, those are the broad categories. Of course, in the front of the line, you have health workers or essential workers who have to go, you know, keep the food supply, the medical system, water, electricity, uh, internet, keep those things running uh, for the people who are, are mostly at home. But that doesn't use up that higher percentage of the testing capacity. We have a lot of people without symptoms who are just kind of worried and there we need to show them that until our capacity goes up a lot, uh, they are going to have to wait. The worst thing we have is that if, if it takes you longer than 24 hours to get the test result, then you don't know, you have been told during the very key period where you're most infectious to take extreme measures. And so we've got to get uh, not just the numbers up, that, that confuses people. It's the speed of the result. South Korea was giving those results in less than 24 hours. I feel like Mother Nature yeah. said, like, no. You know, you're on timeout. Go sit in the yeah. corner and think about what you've done. But that's, that's definitely what's going on right now. And we're seeing these news reports coming out about how the air is cleaning and, you know, the... the the ozone holes are shrinking and, you know, the planet is resetting and the message is pretty loud and clear that the earth doesn't need us and is frankly much better off without us. And it's pretty remarkable and dramatic that in such a short period of time, we're, we're seeing these kind of climate improvements. Um, and I think that that should give us pause and right. make us you know, sit with that and reflect on you know, our habits and our addictions and our lifestyle that's you know, created this situation that we find ourselves in. Yeah, what we were doing is clearly unsustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this profiting off of the suffering of people and the planet, it's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, for a person to make a systemic change in their life, they usually have to face some sort of a trauma. And then they have a period of time in that trauma that wakes them up out of their normal routines where they have an opportunity to make a real shift. And if they do, that shift can last for the rest of their lives. And if they don't, they can fall back asleep again. And sometimes they won't get another chance to have that opportunity for a big shift for another 10 years. And I feel like an individual is like a collective and this is our collective opportunity to make systemic change. And I hope that we evolve rather yeah. than evolve. I think, you know, while being sensitive to the many people out there who have, you know, perhaps lost their jobs or 
um, you know, might be suffering from this illness right now or have a yeah. loved one that is, uh, you know, I have these kind of warring voices in my head. On the one hand, you know, I, I, I hear you loud and clear and, you know, 100 percent that that this is a this is this grand opportunity for us all to kind of reflect um, on both our individual choices and the systemic choices that our culture has made that have led us to this point and perhaps, you know, kind of congeal us around a more communitarian approach to how we move forward so that we can create more sustainable systems and tread light more lightly on the planet and kind of rethink our own, you know, personal daily routines that leave us, uh, you know, kind of separated from our divinity. And yet, on the other hand, there's the other voice that's saying, yeah, but, you know, as soon as this thing is over, humans are going to be scrambling to just get back to, to normal. Like, how do we get back to the way things were? How can I, you know, book that, that, that vacation on the cruise liner and, you know, all the stuff, right? Like, we have this amazing... Human beings are incredibly resilient, but we also have short memories when it comes to this kind of thing. And my fear is that we'll get to the other side, this will pass, and we will, we will you know, not learn the lesson that, that's being presented to us right now. How concerned are you about the coronavirus situation, Warren? Well, you got to defer to the doctors on that. But, uh, uh, you know, you can get into all these figures about how flu regularly kills, you know, 20 times as many people in this country as, or 40 times maybe as much as we've seen in the way of deaths, even more than that. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it is a pandemic. I mean, I don't know exactly what the dictionary definition is, but when you have something that's in China and Korea and Italy and uh, Iran, I mean, it's, 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 it, it would meet my definition of a pandemic. It's something that, and, and it's, no one knows the, duration or dimensions of it now. You can't know at this point. And uh, what you do know is that the dimensions have changed since a few months ago and they haven't changed in, in terms of the possible worst case, but, they, but the best case is moving over in that, you know, it, it, it's spread. I mean, and, you know, Italy's a, a good example. I mean, it, it has really spread. So we, we've got something that we don't know how long it'll be with us. We don't know how severe it'll be. Uh, but uh, there will be uncertainty about that for a considerable period of time. There has to be. What precautions are you taking personally? Are, have you changed any of your habits? <laughs> well, I'm drinking a little more Coca-Cola, actually. That, that seems to have warded off everything else in life. I mean, I'm 89. I'm in, I, I just had, had two different doctors Tell me I'm in much better shape than I was a few years ago. I'm not sure what I'm doing to get in better shape. But, but uh, by accident, I mean, I had, the, had an annual heart uh, check where I wear something around my waist for a couple of the guy said, my, it's never been better. <laughs> so uh, uh, no, I really, uh, uh, I'm a probabilities guy in my nature. So I, uh, you know, I, I there's going to be two two point eight million deaths this year, and at age eighty nine, I'm a little more likely to be than I was in that group than ten. But two million eight, uh, you know, and, and what have we had so far? I mean, it, it it will grow, but in terms of changing my life, I haven't really changed it. But I could work at home easily, and so could people in the office. What are the things that you do when you're under pressure to stay calm, to stay in tune with your mind and not let your emotions overpower you? Okay. Yeah, I've been getting that question a lot. First, I just want to make sure, can every, can you hear me well? Am I sounding good? Just before I can I hear you in? fantastically. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people are having anxiety, a lot of fear. So there are just some practical things I'm going to share for, for you to do to kind of help manage that. I think the first and most important thing is Think about what you're watching on TV. I, a lot of folks mm -hmm. have the news on, and I, I get it. I, I do news. You know, I go on air and I talk about certain things, but they have the news on all day long. And it's constant barrage of corona, the virus, the pandemic, all these people are ill, all this stuff is happening. And that in and of itself is going to give you more fear and more anxiety. Mm -hmm. So you can watch the news, watch it, read through it, get the information you need, update yourself, and then stop. You should not be watching it 
constantly. You mm-hmm. should be binging on shows that help you break away. You should be maintaining other things, but you should not be watching the news on a consistent cycle. That is extremely negative. And more importantly, at night, I never watch the news unless I'm on it. But I, <laughs> <laughs> unless I'm on it covering something, but I won't lo- watch the news. Think you have to think about the mindset you put yourself in before you go to bed. And I, do you, I have a ritual that I do uh, at night before I go to bed. So that's the number one thing I'm going to tell you. Don't watch the news on a cycle. Go in, get briefed. And the same with social media. Get the information you need and then stop, okay? Too much of a barrage of everything is going to be negative. It's going to impact anybody. It would impact me if I sat and watched the news Mm. consistently. It it would have an effect on me. The other thing is think about the situation we're in in that you've got all this time now. And we, we always say, you know, if I had the time, I would do this. So find that time. Find value in what's happening. If it's just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this is happening, then you have no meaning. If you can find meaning in what's happening, mm-hmm. saying that do the things you always wanted to do. If you wanted to learn another language, learn that other language. If you wanted to learn to play the guitar, learn to play the guitar. Do the things you always wanted to do. Be productive in this time. So having moments where you binge watch Netflix or a great show here and there, that's great, but do that moderately. Use this time in a productive way. And actually research shows that we are most productive and created what creative when we when we do things alone. Mm-hmm. So this is that time to do those things. And those are like the most important things. And then again, at night, I think the way the mindset you have when you go to bed at night is super important. So for example, I have a ritual at night. I work out at night. I'm, I'm not a morning person, so that's just how I operate. So I will do, I will do my workout at night. Mm-hmm. Um, followed by my workout, I will do my cold shower at night. <laughs> Depends how brave I'm feeling. Sometimes it's 30 seconds. Sometimes it's a minute. Sometimes it's five. Depends where I'm at. And then I'll do my meditation. Mm-hmm. So those are the three things I do to prep myself before I go to bed at night. Mm-hmm. And so find your own ritual. It doesn't have to be like mine that you prep your mind so that you can sleep well, because when you sleep well, you're calm, you get rest, and then you wake up the next day and you're feeling good. You have a more positive outlook on things. If you want more advice, wisdom, guidance from other successful entrepreneurs on how you can navigate the coronavirus situation, check out the video right there next to me. I hope you find it valuable. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Where you predicted pretty much what is happening now,